Here we are. South, South Australia. Australia. We're at um, Echuca at the moment. We're gonna suss out some camp spots along the way and make our way to Mildura. And where else were we going? The Flinders Ranges. And up up our way through there. So see, see where we end up from that way. But at the moment, that's the Murray. We're just coming around having a look at a few spots while we're here. And we come across this old hut What's this place called? Masters, Masters Landing. Landing. Masters Landing, the sign says, in 1860. So I don't know what that means. But um, yeah, all I know is it's the Murray and this is something we've sort of didn't think we were gonna come and have a look at, but but we're here, we've, we've managed to find our way here. Mm -hmm. Yep, the plan is to follow the Murray into South Australia. Yeah, yep, so we'll, we'll catch that little bit and See what we find on the way. We're on the Murray River, just behind us there. Scott's actually trying to catch our dinner. Let's see how that goes. So he's brought a couple of Murray cod lures. I'll just show you where he is. Nice spot. We're next to a sort of boat ramp. I don't think it's well used. Um, we'll stay for a few nights and see how we go. Homemade pizza. I had a big tub of Greek yogurt that I had to get rid of before the Dubai date. So I thought, oh, I've never tried a pizza base with um, self-raising flour and Greek yogurt. So I did it today, made the dough, and it's looking pretty cool. Never done it before. So after the rain where we were camped there on the Murray, we decided to bail out of there. It was getting a bit muddy and coming out of there was quite slippery and slidey. So I'm glad we did pull out when we did. So we've been sitting here for a couple of days. It's just out of Swan Hill, Lake Boga. And um, we've gone into Swan Hill, had a bit of a look around there. And um, we're heading off again tomorrow. Um, we're just um, sitting here and looking at that sunset. Not a bad little spot, Lake Boga. It is unpowered here, but there is a cost. Not quite sure of how much we paid, but yeah, it's definitely worth the stay. So just thought we'll come and show you the sunset.
While flying the drone around, I noticed the old building down the river, so we went for a drive to go check it out. And when we arrived, there was a volunteer there working on the old boiler, so we went over to have a chat. He was very nice and told us how this place was just left to rot until a few of them decided this should be preserved for everyone to come and have a look at. We are very glad they did as it is an awesome piece of Australian history. He went on to tell us how the Victorian government found the Chafee brothers over in California and brought them back to Australia to engineer and build this pump station to pump water from the mighty Murray to a reservoir then to irrigation channels. In doing so, farmers had a chance to farm these harsh lands. Without this, Mildura would never have been founded. On certain days, and we were lucky enough to be here on one of those days, the volunteers opened the door to go inside and see the huge pumps and also explain how it, all this equipment was delivered on paddle steamers then using the gantry crate inside to build these huge pumps. The station was designed to run four pumps, but only three were needed. We are very privileged to see these wonderful pieces of Australia, learn about our young but amazing history. Sometimes it's not how old things are, but also how hard it must have been to build such things in such a harsh and isolated environment. So this is one of the weirs and the locks on the Murray. That's the weir which holds the water back, keeps a high level and a constant flow through the river. And then over on this side is the lock to let the boats through. So the boat will come in there, gates behind it will close, it will lower the level, the boat will go out and the gates close again and off it goes. Very clever idea. This has been upgraded and it's all a new model so it's works a lot easier than the old days so pretty cool to see actually very cool so just here is the fish traps like it's like a fish waterfall so fish like to come upstream naturally to spawn and obviously the weirs and all the dams and everything can't do that they get trapped so they've made this where they can go up through the stages to get to the other side and they also can monitor it release all the native fish and um, capture all the carp so I reckon that's a pretty cool idea so we're at lock 11 in Mildura and the paddle steamer is just about to come around the corner and come into the lock so we're gonna watch it and see how it all works
So the paddle steam has just come through. They let the water out, opened up the gate, paddle steam went on. Now they've closed the gate again, and that's the lock filling back up. And it fills up so fast. Behind me is the Murray and the Darling Rivers joined together at the junction. So the Murray River serviced New South Wales and Victoria and the Darling goes all the way up to Queensland. So they use these river systems by paddle boat to um, deliver goods all over the few states. So this is where they joined. Just over there behind me is the weir and lock 10. Here we are, South, South Australia. Australia. Ah, oh, damn it. So I should, probably should have um, filmed this before, but I just realized what we were doing. Um, portable water. We are currently um, camped on the side of the river and we didn't want to hitch up the caravan and come to portable water to get more water. So we have this 100 litre bladder in the back of the car in the footwell. And we just filled her up full of water. So we'll take that back to camp and once we've done all our errands, we'll go back to camp and Scott will pump it back into the caravan. So Julie just showed you, I should have filmed it at the start, I'll do it on another time, but um, she showed you with the full bladder, the water bladder, because we're camping up there at the creek. So all I've done is I've got a little 12 volt pump which runs to our filter. And then I have the other hose running from the filter, filling up the tank. So that's how we top up our tanks. When we've been off grid for a while and we don't want to move the van. We haven't um, been traveling around much, so we'll fill up the tank and I'll just give it a bit of a time and see how long it takes but that's just a little 12 volt pump that can be a submersible pump as well so there's an attachment i can put out there and put into a creek if i need if i need water from a, a freshwater creek or something like that as well but yeah that's how we go that's how we fill up our water look at that sun setting behind me Doing a bit of fishing. We're now over in South Australia. Lyrup, Lyrup Flats or something we're camping. On the Murray still. Trying to catch me cod. Not having much luck, mind you. 
but it doesn't hurt when you're sitting back here like this. It's a little bit chilly. Ha! You didn't hear that, did you? The fish are jumping out there. I think they're all carp, but beautiful evening to sit out here. Not bad for our last night on the Murray River. We're still not catching no real fish, but a couple of carp there. Julie got one. So, a couple of quiet beers. Around the fire. Beautiful last night here. We're going to go to Burra. It's a little mine, old mining town. We'll go and chuck, check that out. We're just coming out to have a look at the old copper ore mine. There's two ways of doing it. You can get a key pass, which costs $30 a person to go and do it, or you can do a free tour. Both are self-guided, but with the key, you can actually open up the doors and go into the buildings and, and have a look, which we're not going to do today, but we've just come out to have a look at all the remnants and it's pretty cool date way back into the 1850s it's unreal to see that some of it's still here So what we're looking at is an old creek bed, dried up creek bed, and that's where some miners built some dugouts. They couldn't afford the accommodation, so they just dug out a hole in the side of the bank, put in a few bricks, and that was their accommodation. That's where they lived. In the 1850s. <laughs> yeah, in the 1850s. What a way to live. And one of their biggest problems was they always got flooded out being on a creek bed so when it they got the big rains flooded out and they had to deal with it just down here beside me is one of the chimneys there's another one behind me the chimneys so they could have a fire those were the dugouts from um the chimneys that we just showed you I don't know if you know Midnight Oil, the band, but that house is the, one of the front covers of one of their albums. Didn't even know. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> 